We are in the golden age of two-stroke off-road motorcycles. KTM and sister brands Husqvarna and Gas Gas offer multiple fuel-injected options, and if you prefer a carburetor, Yamaha, Beta, and Sherco have viable alternatives. We got the opportunity to spend several weeks with the Sherco 300 SE factory model, and in this video, we will share how it stacks up. This is the bike that Spain's Mario Roman used to take a win and multiple podiums in the FIM Hard Enduro World Championship and route to second overall in the series. And in the US, Cooper Abbott earned some podiums in the AMA Hard Enduro Championship with the same bike. So the small but potent French brand has proven its carbureted two-strokes can compete with the fuel-injected KTM, Husqvarna, and Gas Gas bikes from Austria in the extreme off-road racing world. But how does it perform for a normal skill level off-road rider? Keep watching to find out. The 2023 Sherco 300 SE Factory Edition is virtually unchanged from the 2022 model, with updated graphics completing the list of changes. But that is not a bad thing, as it is a pr proven platform that comes with high-quality equipment, including KYB suspension, FMF exhaust, AXP skid plate, PolySport handguards, Sella de, de Valle seat, a radiator fan, Brembo brakes, and Brembo hydraulic clutch. The bike weighed in at 257 pounds. That is about 10 pounds more than we have seen for a KTM 300 XCW with a skid plate and aftermarket fan installed. The motor is the standout feature on the 300 SE. It rips when you want it to, but has amazing traction and tractability when you need it, especially when you use the alternative soft map setting via the handlebar mounted switch. Unlike many other bikes with alternative maps, the difference is very noticeable on the 300 SC. If you ever rode a 500 two-stroke, this is about as close as you can get to that type of power with a current production motorcycle. The counterbalancer reduces the vibration significantly from older generation two-strokes, but it is not quite as vib vibration-free as the Austrian two-strokes. We felt that the stock 1348 gearing is a little tall for tight and technical trails, as it seemed that we needed to use first gear in places we would like to use second. So we asked the U.S. Factory One Sherco team manager, Cody Richard Delfer, what they use for Cody Webb and Cooper Abbott's AMA Hard and Joe race bikes. He said that they typically use 1250 or 1251. So that is something to keep in mind if you like the tight stuff. Stock gearing is good for more open trails. The jetting on the 36 millimeter key and carburetor was a little rich for the places we rode the bike in Moab, Utah, and Northern Arizona, which are about 4,000 and 5,000 feet in elevation respectively. So we dropped the needle one clip position. We were happy with the improvement, but felt like it still could use a little bit of fine tuning. Unlike the TPI fuel injected Austrian bikes and Beta RR models that have oil injection systems, the Sherco 300 SE requires that you pre-mix the fuel with oil. It may not be a big deal for some people, but it's kind of a pain when you have multiple bikes in a group or need to fill up in a remote location, as we did for one of our longer rides where we had to carry some oil. The latest generation 2023 KTM XC fuel injected two strokes, which are their closed course off-road models, have gone back to pre-mix. We expect that the 2024 KTM 300 XCW will also require that you pre-mix your fuel. The same will likely be true with the Husqvarna TE and Gas Gas EC models that currently have oil injection systems. So this will likely become less of a differentiating factor for the 2024 models. While we are talking about fuel, the range varies greatly depending on the terrain and how hard you ride, but we found that we got a little less distance out of the Sherco than we did with several TPI two-stroke bikes that we rode with. We got as little as 65 miles out of the 2.75 gallon tank before hitting reserve on one ride with a lot of difficult terrain. Some of that fuel was likely lost via the overflow lines when the bike was tipped in awkward angles, which doesn't happen with closed loop fuel injection systems. Stock tank is translucent, so it is easy to keep an eye on the fuel level. Same can't be said for reaching the fuel tank petcock though. It's buried up underneath the tank, making it really difficult to reach or see. The Sherco has used closed cartridge KYB forks and a KYB shock with linkage. The settings are more aggressive than a KTM XCW or sister Husqvarna TE and Gas Gas EC 300 models, so aggressive riders will likely be more comfortable with this setup but those that prefer plush suspension may not be as happy with this direction. Our test bike was brand new when we got it, and we found it broke in and felt a lot more compliant on the small stuff after about six hours of riding time. As we have noted before with Sherco and Beta bikes that come with Michelin medium enduro tires, 
The tires have extremely stiff carcasses that make the suspension feel stiff, and that was the case with this bike, especially in the sharp edge rocks in Moab. The more we rode the SE 300 though, the more we liked the suspension, especially on more flowing trails. It gives up some plushness in favor of better high speed performance. As for the overall handling, we found the 300 SE to be stable at speed and the cornering was predictable in all types of terrain. The ergonomics are comfortable for most, most riders, although a few did not like the stock grips that are dimpled all the way around rather than a more common half waffle design. Luckily, this is an easy and inexpensive fix if you're picky about your grips. The bodywork in junction with the frame and fuel tank are smooth and comfortable to grip without any snags. The seat is also very comfortable and grippy. The stock headlight is sufficient to get you back when you stay out past dark, but like most stock lights, it is not enough to ride at high pace at night. The computer provides the necessary information with two trip meters, an odometer, speedo, and clock. The Brembo brakes and hydraulic clutch perform very well in all conditions. Brakes are powerful and easy to modulate. Sherco deserves kudos for including a 6mm AXP skid plate and radiator fan as standard equipment. We put both to heavy use. Stock polysport handguards are also appreciated and adequate for most off-road riding. Working on the 300SE was straightforward. The air filter is easily accessible via the toolless removal of the seat. We did notice that some bolts vibrated loose, including the rear skid plate mount and the counter shaft sprocket guard, so we got into the habit of checking the bolts. So how much will one of these beauties cost you? The suggested retail price is $11,849, which is about $500 less than a 2023 KTM XCW300 TPI. Both are not cheap, but the standard radiator fan and AXP skid plate on the Sherco make that price a little more palatable. To wrap things up, several great rides with multiple riders spending time in the saddle provided very positive feedback on the Sherco 300SE factory. The performance of the motor, especially the very different character of the two map switches, got the most thumbs up. The more aggressive map provides some thrilling power, and riders that like snappy response will love this setting, while the soft map provides nearly perfect power for technical trails. The standard fan, skid plate, comfortable ergonomics, and quality brake performance also got a lot of praise. If you're looking for an alternative to the Austrian two-strokes, the Sherco is a great choice.